we're all on the same side. Those of us living. Oh, I ain't on your side. Ah, but you are. You just don't know it yet. I'm Gilbert Cruz for Time Magazine, and I'm here with director George A. Romero, who essentially invented the modern-day zombie with his classic Night of the Living Dead. George's new film, Survival of the Dead, is out in theaters now. George, thank you for being with us. Thank you for asking. Our first question is from uh, Chris from St. Louis. Night of the Living Dead uh, obviously was meant to be entertainment, uh, but was it written with the metaphors of race and social injustice in mind, or is that something that critics ascribe to it after the movie came out? The biggest uh, theme uh, that people uh, talk about is the, the, the racial theme, which to some extent was accident. I mean, Dwayne Jones was the best actor from Among Our Friends. And we, when, when uh, we originally wrote the script, I co-wrote the script with a friend, and we were thinking of the guy as a white guy. And Dwayne just agreed to play the role. And so we thought, well, we'll be very hip and we won't change the script. But the same things happened to him when he, in our mind, was a uh, uh, white guy. I have to say that a lot of that was accident. It, it obviously gets a lot more powerful. And Dwayne and I talked about it while we were shooting the film. But by and large, the, the, the overriding thing that people read into the, or that, that people read it as purely a racial message was accidental. George, our next question is from Charles Ott from Pittsburgh. Hey. I recently read that your career first began in Pittsburgh at WQED with TV pioneer Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? He's a, an icon. All of us, uh, everyone that I know who is still working in, in uh, media uh, uh, of any kind today, Fred gave us all uh, our start. It was my first job as a director, as a shooter and director. Do you know if he ever watched your movies? He, he did. He, he did. He, he, yeah, he what watched. What was his reaction? He watched Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. Uh, it doesn't seem as if those two would match, Mr. Rogers and Night of the Living Dead. No, was, but was he, he, he did. Was he enthusiastic about it? Did he, he, like he it? was. I think he just honestly enjoyed them or could appreciate at least could appreciate them for what they were. Hmm. He's just a very supportive guy. He was great. We have a question that completely randomly about Monkey Shines. Ah. Uh, Ronnie Thomas, who is here from Brooklyn, New York, says, Directors often say that working with animals is harder than working with people. Was that true of your film Monkey Shines, where you had to work with a psychotic primate? <laughs> the story is that this, they, 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 this monkey winds up genetically linked with the guy and starts acting out his uh, wishes, uh, some of them uh, it, it, ill wishes. Stop it! From the director of Night of the Living Dead, George A. Romero, the master of terror and suspense. But the monkey, we needed the monkey to appear to, you know, love the guy. And, and so we had to wait for days when the monkey would be in heat and it would respond to this guy, you know. <laughs> they kept the monkey from seeing that he had to be the first male that she saw that day. Mm -hmm. Was the monkey too in heat on certain days or was that never a problem? Oh, no, the, but that, well, those were the only days that we could shoot those scenes where the monkey was supposed to really be affectionate. I remember several scenes where the monkey is hugging the, yeah. the man. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Our next question is, do you have a favorite horror movie? One that sticks. It's all about what you see when you're at a certain age, the thing the, from another world, Christian Nivey, the Howard Hawks production. It's the first movie that really did it to me, you know, really scared me. You have a favorite movie movie? Non-horror movie? Yeah. Movie of all time? Yeah, the movie that made me want to make movies is uh, a, a, a The Archers, Michael Powell, uh, Pressburger, called The Tales of Hoffman. <laughs> Um, everyone says, what? <laughs> uh, but that's my favorite film of all time. It's a fantasy film. It's based, it's an opera. I saw it uh, at a uh, young enough age, too, and it, it turned me on to classical music. I could also see he did it on a very low budget, and you could see how he was doing some of it. You could see how the effects were done. It was transparent, and it made it accessible and made me think about the process of making film and uh, made me believe that maybe it was reachable, you know? The Archers movies are amazing. Yeah. I think I've only discovered them over the past year or so, uh -huh. but I've seen uh, 
I know where I'm going. The Red Shoes, Red Shoes. Uh, Canterbury Black, Tales, Black Narcissus. Black Narcissus, yeah. Yeah, Colonel, I mean. Colonel Blimp is is. You need to see those in the theater, too. The colors are so lush. Unbelievable. On so well, it's, the old, it's the old Technicolor, you know, process, three color dye process. Fabulous. Our last question, George, is from Zachary Williams from Burnaby, British Columbia. Your dead movies have been known for their strong socio-political subtext, but do zombies still have something to say about the world, or are there a limited number of stories one can tell with them? Do they have an expiration date? Hopefully that there is no expiration date on that. My zombies will never take over the world because I need the humans. The humans are the, are the sort of the, 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 the ones that I dislike the most, <laughs> and they're where the, the trouble really lies. The zombies are just sort of, you know, a lot of mosquitoes out to <laughs> George, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank this you. has been wonderful. Thanks. Appreciate it.